You know I'm done installing Windows. No like seriously, why do I even bother with that operating system? In today's video we are going to talk about on why I'm a bit mad about it, but also Linux and frankly myself as well. Over the past couple of months of using Debian and constantly installing applications, themes and even whole desktop environments, my system has become quite bloated and since I keep backups of my home directory, for me the easiest and fastest way to get a clean installation is to just reinstall the whole thing. And that's what I did. But what I didn't know was that apparently Windows doesn't create its own EFI partition if it finds another one on your system. The EFI partition holds everything that the UEFI needs to start the OS. The bootloader, basic packages, drivers and all that. So when I installed Windows besides Debian, it used the existing Linux EFI partition and placed its data there. In theory that's kind of neat, because many people boot off this same hard drive, which can only have one EFI partition. For me it was not as fortunate, because formatting my main drive also caused the EFI partition to be erased, aka Windows can't boot anymore. The dedicated Windows drive that contains the actual operating system itself is still accessible however, so if this happened to you as well then you could access your data if you need to. And honestly I should have seen that coming. When installing Windows in general it's a good practice to disconnect any drives besides the one that you want to install it on, since even without any additional operating systems installed, Windows can have the odd behavior to install the bootloader on a different drive. I've never quite understood why it does that, but dual booting has somewhat given more insight. It's probably Windows handling different formats or unsupported file systems, which makes it think that something else is already installed there. When I installed it, I didn't disconnect my drives this time and something like this happened. That's entirely on me. What's kind of funny though is that I didn't even notice that it was gone for a couple of weeks, since Debian disables the OS Prover by default, the tool that automatically detects other operating systems and I rarely boot into Windows anyway. When I finally did notice that it was gone, I was already at the point of… Meh, why bother? The only reason on why I still have Windows installed on my system is so that I can play Destiny 2 after Stadia died last year. That's it. Destiny 2, a like 90% PvE shooter, does not work on Linux yet, because Bungie refuses to enable anti-cheat support. And to be honest, this year in Destiny has been very dull in comparison to previous years. In fact, I'm not even interested in playing the current season. Going through the whole Windows installation process again, with logging into my Microsoft account, deny everything that gets thrown at me to download the most recent AMD drivers and forcing for party updates off so that Microsoft doesn't downgrade it mid-game. Actually kind of interesting, I used to own an AMD gaming laptop and the same issue happened there as well, so it seems like Microsoft and AMD are not really getting along with their updates. Like why does it install an older version? And even better, why is that version not compatible with the Radeon software? Whatever, in comparison to installing Linux, Windows is a lot more work on a desktop PC. And even if you don't run into the same troubles as me, driver updates can take quite a long time. And I don't wanna do that anymore and waste precious SSD real estate for an operating system that I just don't need. I still find it hard to believe how good some Linux distributions and especially desktop environments have become. Over the past year we've seen enormous steps in usability improvements, the Wayland display protocol as well as application and gaming support. Some audio, hard and software companies have started to work or at least want their products on Linux. And whilst Windows compatibility layer Proton, which comes with Steam, has introduced many newcomers to Linux, maybe without them actually knowing. Now I'm not saying that Linux is for everyone yet. If you work for a company that wants or even pays you to use a certain application, then Linux is just not for you. But what I am saying is that Linux is ready to be used as a mainstream daily driver. Heck, I myself use it and there are only two things that I needed to sacrifice. For reconfiguring my mouse instead of Logitech G-Hub I use Solar and I can't play some games, which besides Destiny 2 I never actually touched. And that's it. I've always been using GIMP for my thumbnails and I can use Inkscape if I wanted to draw something. For recordings and editing I use OBS and DaVinci Resolve, just like I did on Windows. 
When I play CS2, Minecraft, Apex Legends, GTA 5 or whatever else, if it is with my friends, then I use Discord, which on KDE Plasma now also supports screen sharing on Wayland if you use the X Wayland bridge. Some distributions like Fedora already come with it pre-installed. I'm not saying that everything was as easy as it is now. Over more than one and a half years ago, I was not able to use the Flatback version of OBS, since it had green and purple artifacts in any recording. Since I am on an AMD GPU now, I also cannot export my videos in .mp4 with the H.264 codec in DaVinci Resolve, even though I own the Studio Edition, which technically supports it. For me personally, those were just some minor annoyances, and it won't affect most people anyway. I believe that many just have a very Windows-like or even false perception of Linux because it developed so fast in the past few years. For example, I get quite a lot of comments on how executing a .exe file is a lot easier than using the command line and add repos and whatnot. But I always wonder where that perception comes from. On many modern distros like Ubuntu, Fedora and Sorin OS, all you have to do is to open up the software store, search for the application you want and install it in seconds. How is that worse than opening up a web browser, searching for the application, don't click on a malicious link that might be advertised, download the .exe setup file and make your way through the installer? What is kind of controversial about the whole installation process is that even Microsoft knows that the software store is superior and they are increasingly pushing developers towards that. And okay, let's say an application really is not available in a software store on Linux, but it's offered on their homepage. Let's compare that way to Windows. Open up the web browser, search for the application, head onto the website, download it and double click it. Yeah, it's literally the same. In many ways, Linux can be far superior to Windows if you learn some of its useful features. For example, one thing that annoyed me about the desktop environment GNOME was that you couldn't create files or links with a right click. But little did I know that all I had to do was to drop a template file into the templates directory and now it works. The awesome thing about this way of doing it is that if you often need to create new files that have a similar layout, you save the file once in here and can automatically generate a copy of it. Customization in general is a huge plus point for Linux, because many desktop environments allow you to create your own personalized workflow. And for those who don't really care about that and just want a system that just works, then Linux also offers something for them. The GNOME desktop environment is my personal recommendation for most, since it feels different from Windows, which makes it a unique and fun experience. If you want something more customizable or more bleeding edge, then you can go for KT Plasma, which supports FreeSync and better scaling. There are of course tons and tons of more desktop environments out there, but what you go for is entirely your choice. I for once can say that I really don't enjoy using Windows anymore, mainly because I've grown accustomed to a new workflow that just suits me so much better. And if I find something that I don't like, I simply change it. This is much harder to do on Windows and I'm done with it. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and why don't you also subscribe to the channel? If you're interested in helping this channel grow, then you should definitely check out our membership program in the description below. Thanks for your support. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.